Hi everybody, Max Licato here. I have a word for those of you feeling overwhelmed by the current events, the news out of Israel, the bombings, the kidnappings, the death in the streets, the missiles in the air. Add to this the already fragile world in which we live, China eyeing Taiwan, Russia invading Ukraine, Palestinians in their days of rage. It's enough to bring a person to tears, to dread, to a dark place. But let's not give in to that bad news. Jesus can help us here. And I've got a few scriptures that I think will encourage us. On the eve of his crucifixion, Jesus told his followers what was going to happen. That he would be abandoned by his friends and he would be killed with his, by his enemies. There would be denial and betrayal and promises and death. What, what news could be worse for the apostles? Their rabbi dead, their, their, the apostles alone, their dreams shattered. Don't you know the questions rose in their minds like waves on a stormy sea? How can this be? What can we do? What will we do? Yet before they could voice their fears, Jesus issued this unexpected possibility, John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many, many rooms. And if it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. Know what Jesus did. He lifted their eyes. He shifted their thoughts. He spoke of his father's house. He told them of a prepared place and his promised return. He urged them to think less of their immediate fear and more of their eternal home. He calmed their fears with words about heaven. What would Jesus say to this troubled generation of ours? Would he not urge us to think long and hard about the life to come? God's therapy for our trepidation reads like this. For our present troubles are small and they won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that far outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that are unseen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. That's Second Corinthians 4.17. You see, face the problems of this life by focusing on the promises of the next. The future is not frightening if you know the future, and you can know the future when you know who controls it. Now, when the Bible discusses life after this life, it always leads to Jesus. <laughs> it's always all about Him. In fact, on the day that Jesus was taken into heaven, uh, two angels asked his watching followers this question. Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? <laughs> this Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Acts chapter 1 and verse 11. Jesus will come, the angel said. Not may come, might come, or possibly could come. Jesus will come. His promised return is not some nebulous pie in the sky, great land in the great by and by possibility. No, it is a real guaranteed circled on the calendar event. I wonder how many times Peter reflected on these words. I wonder how many times he made that brief walk from Jerusalem back to the Mount of Olives where Jesus had ascended. I wonder how many times he reheard those words. He will come back. I wonder if he searched the skies and investigated the heavens, maybe reflected on the angel's promise. He will come in the same way you watched him go. Three decades later, he urged his readers to fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1.3 Paul told Titus to spend his days looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. Titus 2, 13. You see, the Christian lives life on tiptoe. 
ever searching the skies. We awaken with the thought, perhaps today, perhaps today. Our hope is centered in the bodily return of Jesus Christ. He is our hope. He's our reason for joy. We are looking for a new age in which Jesus will be crowned as rightful king and we will serve as his grateful servants. Amen. You see, the purpose of this life is to choose where you will spend the next. All of history is headed toward that day, that great day, which will inaugurate an endless era of justice and joy and glory. This was the conviction of Peter. In one of his earliest sermons, he declared this, The Lord will send Jesus, the one he chose to be the Christ. But Jesus must stay in heaven until the time comes when all things will be made right again. Acts 3, 17 through 21. All things will be made right again. Does that promise not speak to your heavy heart? Are you weary of racism? Things will be made right. Weary of child abuse? Things will be made right. Weary of terrorists wreaking terror, rulers pillaging the poor, scandal infecting the government, the church? Things will be made right. This is our hope. He is our hope. We look forward to the moment in which Jesus will come for His church, resurrect and renew our bodies, honor His bride, reward his followers. We eagerly await the day in which Jesus will put an end to the evil of Satan, purge this planet of sin, and establish an eternal kingdom. Let's follow the counsel of Peter. Let's fix our eyes on the hope we have in Jesus. In May 1942, General Douglas MacArthur made a promise to the people of the Philippines. The general commanded Allied forces in the South Pacific and after American and Filipino troops were forced to surrender to the invading Japanese army, MacArthur vowed to return. He had the words, I will return, printed on leaflets and scattered over the islands, and he kept his promise. He did return, and by J July 1945, the country was liberated. A month later, World War II ended. Dear friend, Jesus will return. Jesus is on the throne. Jesus is aware of what the world is going through. He is hearing our prayers. He is hearing our hurts. And we pray for this fragile world. And we set our hope on the imminent return of Jesus. Let's pray together. Gracious Lord, let your mercy please be upon these people. Some of them are very discouraged, very disheartened. I pray, precious Lord, that you would speak words of peace over their lives, words of peace, because with just a word, Lord, you can change everything. And we do look to the day that you return, and we return to heaven with you. In Jesus' name, amen.